Please all kneel as we now pray our Arasho Imparata. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed us and claimed many lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts and healthcare personnel they, that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin Mary. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Roque, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us, St. Pedro Calungsod, pray for us, that in all things God may be adored and glorified. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is the third Sunday of Easter. Our priest presider is Father Dave Concepcion, together with Reverend Father Milan Ted Toralba. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. O sing to the glory of His name. O render Him glorious praise. Alleluia. We begin our celebration in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear friends, my brothers and sisters, the road to Emmaus traveled by two disciples is the path taken by those whose hopes in life have been crushed. Like the disciples, may we turn to the Lord and invite Him. Stay with us, Lord. May we recognize Him in the Eucharist where he explained the scriptures to us and breaks bread with us, setting our hearts on fire and make us witnesses that indeed he is truly risen and alive in our midst. And so to prepare ourselves to participate in the sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins and humbly ask the Lord for his pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and in Lord, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. 
Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O Lord, and renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The greatest proof that he is indeed the Messiah of God is his resurrection from the dead. It is the one and the foundation of our faith. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you, Staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commanded to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan, and for knowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad, and my tongue has exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God has sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup. You it is who hold fast my lot. Lord, you will show us the path of life. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night, my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. 
My body too abides in confidence because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Lord, you will show us the path of life. You will show me the path to life, abounding joy in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Our Christian faith and hope rest in Jesus who died and rose from the dead. With such a solid foundation, we have a mission not to be discouraged. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartial, impartially according to each one's works, Conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your futile conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless and blemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. Lord Jesus, open the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. 
was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But he urged them, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jer Jerusalem where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A boy was so tense, whose blood pressure shoot up, was given a medicine to sleep. And after an hour, he woke up in his own room in the hospital, asking his mother, Will I survive the operation? Ma, Mabubuhay ba ako? Mabubuhay ba ako? At ang nanay sabi sa kanya, Bakit? Ano bang iniisip mo? Inoperahan ako, di ba? Mabubuhay ba ako? <laughs> sabi ng nanay, Tumigil ka nga, Joey. Tinuli ang kalang. Tumigil ka nga, tinuli ang kalang. Akala mo, operasyon na, tuli lang pala. But for some would say, tuli lang eh. But for others, it can be a life and death experience. Hindi mo alam. Kanya-kanyang kwento yan. Kanya-kanyang pagkatakot. I was a seminarian then when somebody climbed the Guadalupe Bridge and attempted to commit suicide. And people were gathered trying to encourage the man to go down. Traffic was terrible. Maagang nagsimula. Alas gis na minabalitaan yon. Alas singko hindi pa tapos. Sabi ng iba, ano ba yan? Tatalon ba talaga o hindi? Di ba? May nagdadasal na tumalon na eh. Hindi po ba? Ano? Pero pagdating na alas 7 ng gabi, hindi tumalon. At tinatanong siya, tinatanong siya ng isang TV announcer, ano po ang nagtulak sa inyo para kayo hindi tumuloy sa inyong pagpapakamatay? Ang simpleng sagot ay, Parang ang dumi ng pasig. Parang ang dumi ng pasig. Sabi namin, grabe, magpapakamatay rin lang, lamili pa ng tubig. May kanya-kanya tayong kwento. We have our own setbacks. We have our own failures. Name it. We have our own frustrations. 
and some even thought of ending their lives. What can we learn of today's readings? My dear friends, my brothers and sisters, you have to understand this. You have to understand that death is necessary for the resurrection. Death is necessary for the resurrection. There is no resurrection without death. As C.S. Lewis have said this, death is a necessary evil. If you call it evil, it is necessary for the resurrection. Many have failed to live their life well because they are so afraid of dying. Many have failed to live their life well because they are so afraid of dying. Many of us have failed to become successful because we are so afraid of failing. We fail to be successful because we are so afraid of failing. Takot na takot. Maraming pagkatakot na nagiging hadlang para tayo umunlad. Takot na takot. Dati, pag may umaching, ang sagot ng marami, bless you. Ngayon, pag may umaching, alis tayo, may COVID yan. It has become very traumatic. Three things. Number one. Number one. If you experience failure, learn to step back and not walk away. Learn to step back and not walk away. Hindi ka, hindi mo mapapagtagumpayan anumang kabiguan kung hindi mo ito haharapin. Kahit kailan walang nananalo sa mga taong tumatakbo. If you want to win, don't run away. Just step back and look at the bigger picture. Ano hindi ko nakikita dito? Ano ang ayaw kong tingnan? Ano ang itinuturo sa akin? My dear friends, my brothers and sisters, every stone can be a stumbling block or a stepping stone. Keep that in mind. It will be the same stone but can be looked at in two different ways. Your problem can make you or break you. It's up to you. Kaya mahirap yung masyadong madali ang buhay na kapag tayo nagkaroon ng konting problema, akala mo ikamamatay na. Turuan mga magulang ang mga anak na matutong maghirap. Hindi yung pag naghihirap ng konti, sasaluhin ka agad. Sasaluhin ka agad. Kaunting gasgas lang, akala mo ikamamatay ka agad ng anak. Mga minamahal na mga kapatid, teach your children how to struggle through life. Learn to step back. Learn to step back. Pagkamisan, kailangan nung bumitaw para ang bata ay matutong maglakad. Kasi kung palagi mo yung inaakay, hindi yan maglalakad ng kanya. Kung palagi mong sasabihin, anong gusto mong kainin? Hindi yan kakain kung ano nakahain. Learn to step back. Ganon din ang Diyos. Pagkamisan ng Diyos ay bumibitaw, parang kanya mga alagad ay matuto. Second, second, be schooled. Mag-aral ka. If you want to be an engineer, then you take up engineering courses. If you want to be an accountant, then you take up accounting courses. Simply lang. Simply lang. If you want to be a follower of Christ, then be schooled in the scriptures. Pag-aralan mo, 
basahin mo ang nasusulat tungkol sa Diyos. Hindi yung basta nakikinig ka sa mga tao na nagsasalita. Learn! You have to remind yourself, my dear friends, my brothers and sisters, that ignorance of scriptures is ignorance of Jesus Christ. You want to be a follower of Christ? Learn. Be schooled in the scriptures. Read your Bible. Don't read it like a novel. Read it as an experience. Marami sa atin ang nabibigong basahin ang Biblia kasi nagsimula kagad kayo sa Genesis at gusto niyong tapusin ito hanggang sa Book of Revelation. Iisa lang ang kwento niyong lahat. Pagdating sa Book of Numbers, tumigil na kayo kasi wala na kayong maintindihan. Learn, read the scriptures. I suggest you begin with the Gospel of John. You begin with the Gospel of John. You don't have to read chapter by chapter. You can read according to the different stories. One story at a time. Be schooled. Be schooled. As they walk along the way, my dear friends, Jesus reminded them of the scripture. Learn. Be schooled. You want to be a better person? Be schooled by your experience. You all know this, that we learn more wisdom in our failures than on our success. We learn more wisdom in our failures than in our success. Matutu. You know Thomas Edison failed 1,000 times before he was able to light a bulb. 1,000 times. And one reporter have said and asked him, but you have failed 1,000 times. And Thomas Edison said, oh, 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 I never failed. And the reporter said, it took you 1,000 times before you're able to light a candle, I mean to light a bulb. And Thomas Edison said, Oh, I have learned 1,000 times how not to make a bulb. You look at it as a failure, I look at it as a lesson. You look at it as a 1,000 times of being unable to light a bulb. But I look at it as a thousand times not how to make a bulb. My dear friends, my brothers and sisters, learn from your failures. Be schooled by it. Third, third, be nourished at the table. Be nourished at the table. Reading the scripture is not enough. Come to the table. Come to the table. Be nourished at the table. When you fail, come to the table. When you are discouraged, come to the table. When you are sick, come to the table. When you are sad, come to the table. When you are at a loss, come to the table. That you may recognize Christ in the breaking of the bread. But of course, when you are successful, come to the table and say, thank you. Come to the table and say, thank you. Never walk away, but you can distance yourselves so that you're able to see the bigger pictures. Be schooled by your experience. If you want to follow Jesus, learn and be schooled by the scriptures. Third, come to the table. 
and you will recognize Christ in whatever situation you are, in the breaking of the bread. Amen. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten not made consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, my brothers and sisters, let us put our petitions to our loving Father who accompanies us in our journey with Jesus. Let us address him as we pray. Father, give strength to your people. Father, give strength to your people. Father, bless our church and civil leaders that they may not tire of serving you in your people, especially the poor, the outcast, and those who have no voice in society. We pray. Father, Father give, give strength, strength to your, your people. people. Father, be with those who are burdened with doubt and discouragement and those who undergo crisis, we pray. Father, Father give strength, strength to your people. Father, bless our efforts and the work of our hands. Protect us from all harm. Give us plentiful harvest and guide those who travel by air, land, and sea, we pray. Father, Father give, give strength, strength to your, your people. people. Father, in the evening of our life, when our days are coming to a close, comfort us with your merciful love. Look not on our sins, but remember your fatherly care for us, we pray. Father, give strength to your people. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray, Father, give strength to your people. We include all the intentions offered in this Mass. God, our loving Father, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, is strengthen us in this stable fellowship as Christ once did to his disciples at Emmaus. We ask this through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, to your goodness this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, to your goodness this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work human hands have made, it will become for us our spiritual drink. 
Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite heart. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice of yours and mine be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always, at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given out for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave you thanks. Gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life in the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 
gathering all our prayers into one. Let us now pray to the Father in the very words our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all unnecessary worries and distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Kindly look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace within our hearts, peace in our mind, peace in our own homes, in our own families, peace in our workplace, peace in our community, peace in our country and in the world, and grant you unity in accordance with your will who lives and reign forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of our Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now bless one another by giving each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is Jesus, the resurrection and the life. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are you who are invited here to receive him in holy communion. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot in this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray the prayer of Padre Pio Petrocina. Stay with me, Lord, for it is necessary to have you present so that I do not forget you. You know how I easily abandon you. Stay with me, Lord, because I am weak and I need your strength that I may not fall so often. Stay with me, Lord, for you are my life 
And without you, I am without fervor. Stay with me, Lord, for you are my light, and without you, I am in darkness. Stay with me, Lord, to show me your will. Stay with me, Lord, so that I hear your voice and follow you. Stay with me, Lord, for I desire to love you very much and always be in your company. Stay with me, Lord, if you wish me to be faithful to you. Stay with me, Lord, for as poor as my soul is, I want it to be a place of consolation for you, a nest of love. Stay with me, Jesus, for it is getting late and the day is coming to a close. And life passes, death, judgment, eternity approaches. It is necessary to renew my strength so that I will not stop along the way. And for that, I need you. It is getting late and death approaches. I fear the darkness, the temptation, the dryness, the cross, the sorrows. Oh, how I need you, my Jesus, in this night of exile. Stay with me tonight, Jesus, in life with all its dangers, I need you. Let me recognize you as your disciples did at the breaking of the bread so that the Eucharistic communion be the light which disperses the darkness, the force which sustains me, the unique joy of my heart. Stay with me, Lord, because at the hour of my death, I want to remain united to you. If not by communion, at least by grace and love. Stay with me, Jesus. I do not ask for divine consolation because I do not merit it. But the gift of your presence, oh yes, I ask this of you. Stay with me, Lord, for it is you alone I look for. Your love, your grace, your will, your heart, your spirit, because I love you. And ask no other reward but to love you more and more. With a firm love, I will love you with all my heart while on earth and continue to love you perfectly during all eternity. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue to pray for a new Archbishop for the Archdiocese of Manila. Heavenly Father, you have blessed our Archdiocese time and again with good, holy, learned, and wise shepherds who have led us ever closer to you. Aware of your profound love for us, we ask you to bless us once again. Send us a good, holy, learned, and wise man to become our next Archbishop. Inspire us, the clergy, religious, and laity, to work generously with him so that we might grow together in your love and continue the good work you have begun in us for the sake of all people. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Prayer for our family. Dearest Father in heaven, bless our family and bless us with new beginnings. A smile upon our parents and surround our children with the soft mantle of your love. Teach every child of ours to follow in your footsteps and to live life in the ways of faith, hope, and charity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Kindly mention your intentions. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Santa Maria Goretti. Pray for us. Please rise. My dear friends, my brothers and sisters, keep in mind that is necessary for the resurrection to happen. Saint John of the Cross have said this, you have failed to embrace Jesus because you are so afraid to embrace the cross. Many have failed to live life, to live their life well because they are so afraid of dying. Many have failed to be successful because they are so afraid of failing. And I would say, many are so afraid of loving because they are so afraid of being hurt. Many are so afraid of being generous because they are so afraid that they will end up with nothing. My dear friends, my brothers and sisters, Emmaus is not just a place, but a moment. Emmaus is not just a place, but a moment. Find your own Emmaus. Learn to step back and see the bigger picture. Be schooled in prayer and in scriptures. And be nourished at the table of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of His only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gifts of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by His blessings all the days of your life. Amen. May He, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with Him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed day.